Welcome to The Approach Shot, the golf show that's more laughs than links, more stories than strokes, more guffaws than golfers. Here are the hosts of The Approach Shot, John Ashton and Neil Michaels. It is time for us, The Approach Shot. I am John Ashton. He is Neil Michaels. Buongiorno. Oh, we're, we're getting polyglottinous. Uh, I'm sorry, poly who? Poly, yes, you know poly. <laughs> polyglottinous. Polyglot is someone who speaks a little bit of a lot of languages. Ah, uh, yes. I sound polyglottinous <laughs> sounded like you eat an awful lot. <laughs> That's right. Well, I throw the words out. You can you can use them to mean whatever you want. Any way I want. <laughs> That's the way it is. Hey, listen, just want to point out that if you forgot to set your clocks ahead last night, you're going to be an hour yes. late for your tea time. No. <laughs> Hustle your buns, buddy. Get up and get out. The interesting thing about this, now that it's going to be light an hour later, uh-huh. I'm going to play more frequently because I have this thing about we work during the day. People think, oh, you do a podcast, but we actually do, you know, some work, some preparations some ad sales, <laughs> things like that. Well, maybe you do. And, well, <laughs> sometimes, right. <laughs> the idea of taking time out in the day, a little tough to do, to get out during the day, and there's a guilt factor and stuff, but the idea now of getting out at like three o'clock, having put in a mostly full day mm-hmm. and playing either nine and being done or getting in a full 18, mm-hmm. that sounds like heaven to me. See, now with the with the time shift, you can start at three and get a full 18 in. Yeah. Don't have to worry yeah. about getting the carts back to the barn by 530. But you should adopt my technique, man. I do a little bit of work every day. Yeah. OK. I, I've I noticed just, how little. I <laughs> <laughs> I spread it out over the course of the week so that I have no guilt whatsoever to pick a day, put my little gone golfing sign on the office door, and I'm out of here. So try So it. you take a day, you, you give yourself a day to, to have gone golfing, not gone fishing, but yeah. gone golfing. I do. Hey, speaking of guys who take days off and play golf, I want to give a, a shout out congratulations to my brother-in-law, Dr. Dave Brunsting, who is one of the great guys on the planet, you know, he's, he's salt of the earth, shirt, give your shirt off your back kind of guy. Really? And he got himself a hold in one at Fairbanks Ranch Country Club on number 17 in front of a couple of friends and in front of a couple of people who were standing on the 18th tee going, your ball went in. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, and it is great to have witnesses. That is my fear, that I am finally going to get an ace when I'm out playing by myself. And yeah, I'm <laughs> absolutely sure that when you're playing by yourself, you will tell us you got an ace. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the, I knew that. I, I know that. We are going to talk to not a guy who got an ace on the PGA Tour, but the guy who told him how to get that ace on the PGA Tour. Yeah. Patrick Reed's caddy, Kessler Corain, is coming up as our guest on the show a little bit. Now talk about work. Yeah. <laughs> sure, it's only four days a week, but it's right. tough work. Nice uh, hole-in-one you got in the, uh, in the U.S. Open. Yeah, you had something to do with it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, a, a funny guy, Max Herring, will be uh, – see, I hear the jokes already. Hearing, listening, herring, you know, yeah. They're all coming up. Max Hearing, funny guy. Golf is a funny game. Coming up a little bit later in the show, too. The Approach Shot. It's March, and it's going to be a great month for sports, and therefore a great month to make some extra money with my bookie. With March Madness right around the corner, my bookie's offering a shot at a share of $10,000 with the My Bracket Contest, and it's only a single dollar entry. Plus, there's a ton of NBA action on tap, and there's not one but two UFC pay-per-view cards to bet on. Regardless of your favorite player or team, you've got the choice from thousands of lines and prop bets on all major sports, and it's all in one place at MyBookie. Hey, it's Neil Michael suggesting you get a head start by signing up today with promo code APPROACH. When you do, MyBookie will match your first deposit halfway, up to a thousand bucks. Deposit five hundred dollars, get two hundred and fifty dollars. Deposit one hundred and get fifty. That's free cash credited to your account instantly on top of your deposit. The best part is you always have access to the action, whether you're at home or on the go. Visit mybookie.com online or on your phone at mybookie.ag and use the promo code APPROACH to grab yourself that 50% deposit bonus. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere 
with my bookie. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Generic Sildenafil allows you to save up to $650 on Viagra. Why pay name brand prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get the same results for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 50 generic Sildenafil pills for just $99. Call 800-590-0443. That's 800-590-0443. Again, 800-590-0443. Thanks for hanging and coming back. This is The Approach Shot. I am John Ashton. He is Neil Michaels. It is true. And today, we actually are going to do something strange on our show. We're actually going to talk golf on this golf (laughs) podcast. (laughs) And today we have with us Kessler Corain. He is the caddy to one of the best and most talked about golfers on the tour. That, of course, being Patrick Reed. Welcome to the show, Kessler. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. So you're you're about to spend a busy weekend, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's the players, and we're super happy to be here. And uh, it's about as good as it's ever looked in the eight years I've been coming here. Okay. How frustrating is it to be there and to be involved in all that and to be carrying a bag and not swinging a club? <laughs> um, For me, here, I'm happy not to be swinging a club. Like I said, the one, shot on, the one shot on 17 is enough for me. It's enough pressure. So can't can't imagine on Sunday coming down, you know, yeah. final group having to hit into that green. It's It's got to be intimidating in and of itself. Like, like you were saying, today you hit a shot on there just for grins and giggles just to make sure you could, and you did, and you can, yes. and it stuck. But when you put a ball in the water in front of 20 million people on TV, I mean, that's it's got to be just a tad embarrassing, isn't it? I can imagine it would be. Yeah. Um, my favorite memory of it is the Freddie couple. I call it the Freddie couples, but some people like call it a poor man's hole in one mm-hmm. because whenever he puts the ball in the water and then is, you know, takes a drop, next shot goes in. <laughs> yeah. I've done that. That's the closest I've ever gotten to a hole in one because I did that same exact thing like two months ago. And I was oh, like, got frustrated, hit just chunky right in the water. At least his first <laughs> shot was good, I'm sure. Yeah. It's just a little short. <laughs> and uh mine was just terrible looking. And then of course, <laughs> you know, I'm so mad. Just take a swing at it and I'm walking away. I don't even want, I just see it flying towards the green. I know it's gonna get to the green. I'm not even thinking about it. And then the caddy goes, Man, that shot looks really good. And I was like, Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I get up to the green with a putter and I'm looking for the ball and I'm like, Man, where is this thing? And he goes, I think it's in the hole. And I look, I'm like, Oh man, it's there. <laughs> and then they're all he's like, Man, poor man's birdie, baby. And I was like, You're right. That is a poor man's birdie. I mean, poor man's hole in one. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a great story. For those who don't know how it all started, you want to tell the story of how you became Patrick's caddy? Well, it's mostly starts with him meeting my sister and the first time I met him was at my college graduation at UTSA back in 2011 so that was actually the first time I met him was at she brought him to my graduation said I'm dating this guy okay fast forward a little bit they get married then fast forward a little bit she's his caddy and then a little bit more I graduate college I'm in medical device sales working at Medtronic pushing insulin pumps I don't know anything about golf at this point like I can hit the ball I can get it forward I can't do much with it. You know, I know generally the etiquette of the game, but for the most part, you know, at this level, it's so crazy. And uh, he calls me, he's like, hey, he's like, what do you think about, you know, coming out and caddying for me for, and it was supposed to be temporary. And my, seems like I've, I've, I've passed all the tests that I needed to. So Kessler. I'm sure around Thanksgiving table, Justine every once in a while says, uh, hey, uh, you know, I I could do the job as good as you can. Uh, Is there any sibling rivalry on this? I mean, you know, it's always a running joke with us. And uh, I mean, she she does have the first victory with Patrick (laughs) at Wyndham back in 2013. So she's definitely earned her stripes, if you ask me, as far as Mm -hmm. caddies go. She knows her stuff. She can give more probably constructive criticism than a lot of wives probably can. Uh, I bet you Patrick got a lot more TV time when she was on the bag because she's a hell of a lot prettier than you are. (laughs) I would hope so. Yeah, that's probably the case. Yeah, that's tough looking over your shoulder every once in a while. I better do a good job because I know Sis is pretty good at this. Yeah, seriously, you can't mess it up. And you can't complain about carrying the bag because she's like five nothing and she carried that bag. So you can't be like, man, this thing's heavy. <laughs> no, like, 
no one can no one can complain about how heavy the bag is because if she could lug that thing around for the year and a half almost two years that she did it then yeah. how heavy is the bag it could be about 45 pounds on okay. a light day maybe 40 and then if you get in a rainy situation and you got to carry a lot of extra stuff it can yeah. get up to like six like maybe 55 60 at most i would think i've never like throwing it on a scale though so yeah. that'd be interesting to see no wonder you work out daily my goal is to for longevity i mean there's a lot of caddies out here that you know they're getting older and you kind of see and you're almost like looking at your future and some of them didn't quite take care of themselves enough and yeah. then some of them it's just like this this job can run your body into the ground just like any other physical yeah. labor job so the goal is to preserve injury prevention, things like that. And I don't think many of us consider this. I mean, it makes perfect sense and it is, you're correct, but we don't look at it as a physical labor job. This has got to be probably the highest paying physical labor job in the country, isn't it? <laughs> I, I can't think of any right now that are like more, but it also depends on who you're working for well, and how you true. do it and all those things. But, you know, it's it's not only labor intensive. It's also, you know, there's the emotional roller coaster that could go with the rounds of four days. There's the mental capacity that you have to have. So, like, if you think of like for me. If I'm in a really good physical condition, running up that hill on like, let's say eight at Augusta is not fun after you <laughs> rake a bunker. And if it's hot in the thing, like some, like you got to keep your wits about you, mm -hmm. so to speak. It's one of those things that like, if I'm in good physical condition, because the first thing that happens in dehydration or fatigue or anything like your decision-making ability start going down. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's at least my theory. I'm, and I'm pretty sure it's pretty accurate. You know, I feel like if I take care of myself that I'll be able to do my job better. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's what I want to, you know, I want to be able to do my job at my best of abilities so I don't let him down at the end of the day. I, I got one more question that I've been meaning to ask, and I'm glad we finally have a professional caddy to ask this question of. Now that they're allowing range finders, are, are they allowing them during practice rounds only or in the competitive rounds? According to what I've been told, like mm -hmm. you can have a range finder in the competitive round at the PGA. The PGA, not like, not here, not anywhere else. Okay. So just at the PGA. it's just okay. that tournament. I got yeah. it. Okay. See, a lot of us get confused when we see those those initials. <laughs> Trust me, there's a lot. And, and they say range telling devices. So for me, I'm like, well, does that include like a GPS? Like the little, you know, oh, so it shows true. you the front, middle, back. Because uh -huh. to me, that's a way better thing. Because one, those can't, those, none of those have slope. I have a watch and it's great and it's easy and it's convenient and it's quick to just look down and get a number. Right. Because if you're in a bad situation, sometimes a laser doesn't go through trees, yeah. but you might have a gap up there and you're like, well, but we don't have a number. So like, here's the gap, but what, what's it to the green? You can look down at your watch and be like, well, in the middle of the greens, a buck 85, we got a gap up there. Like, so if you get, if you hit your, you know, whatever, seven or six through that yeah. gap, we're probably doing pretty good somewhere around that green. If you're having a laser, it could get really tough to, you know, it, it's not going to save you too much in time. I would think, but that's my big question when we get there is like, what about watches? Like, what's the, what's the standard on that? So it opens up a lot of questions for everybody. I think yeah. a minute ago, you mentioned emotional roller coaster, And then you also mentioned Augusta in the same breath, 2018 masters comes along. Patrick has won several times, but he hasn't won a major yet. And here comes Augusta. How does that whole thing roll out? And what does it feel like when he wins? You know, it's not like we had a crazy huge lead and then it was shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. So at one point it becomes like playing Russian roulette with every decision. Each decision could be the decision that kills you or it could be the decision that makes it happen for you. And luckily, we definitely made all the right decisions when we were supposed to make them. And it came through at the end with that that win. And honestly... People are like, oh, that one must have been a lot of fun. It's like, yeah, after yeah. the fact, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> I mean, it's great afterwards. But honestly, you wake up the next couple of days and I still couldn't believe it. You know, like I'm waiting to wake up from a dream. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it was craziness. And then afterwards, like I said, it's such a it's such a head rush. Yeah. And at the end of the day, the biggest thing for me is like that's history. And like that's and we're part of helping these guys make history. And that's the main thing. You just don't want to let them down in those moments because there's so many guys that finish second at Augusta. It's one or two decisions that is the difference between them going home and making history and having a green jacket. Yeah. And who knows if they'll ever have that chance again. And that's the biggest part for me is like you don't want to let that guy down by making a poor decision or thinking, man, I should have told him to do this or told him to do that. Now I can look back and be like, we did everything we were supposed to, came out on top. You know, that's Do you guys ever, ever disagree 
on the decisions? I'm sure if you do, oh, he, he takes precedence. Sure. But I mean, this is like being a caddy and 